entered a place of praise, a place of purpose, a place of progress. Welcome to Victory in Praise Church of Stockton, California. How's it going, family? My name is Leonard Jones, and I am here to bring to you the first lesson from the Millennial Series. I'm going to be coming to you guys from Ezekiel 22, 30 and 31. If I had a title for this little short lesson, I would call it, Are You Ready to Stand in the Gap? Ezekiel 22 and 30, 31. And I saw for a man among them who should build up the wall and stand in the breach before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. 31. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger, bringing down on their own heads all they have done, declares the sovereign Lord. So let me just give you a little kind of historical context of kind of what's going on in the book of Ezekiel during this time. During this time, uh, in this chapter, God is describing the disastrous state of Israel and uh, at the time and also just kind of heavily touches on the sins that are being committed against him. And so he looked for someone to stand in that gap and intercede or advocate on behalf of the people. And since he found no one, he delivers his verdict. And his verdict is delivered in, in, in verse 31. I'll read that one more time. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger, bringing down on their heads all they have done declares the sovereign Lord. Looking at this, what does it mean for millennials to stand in the gap, right? So just kind of give you a little bit of historical context. In biblical times, cities uh, were defended by high walls. If, if there was a breach or a gap in the wall, the defense of the city were compromised. And a breach in the wall could possibly mean the destruction of an entire city. So God uses that imagery of that breach in the wall to explain the effects of sin on the land and on our cities or even in our nation as a whole. So what does that mean? That means that when there was a breach in the wall, there was a gap there. When there's a gap there, it allows for things to flow in. And in this sense, we're talking about sin. So when you have that gap, it allows for sin to infiltrate the city or your heart or your home, right? And as, and as sin is coming in, if you are not there to intercede and close that gap and, and put a hedge in that wall, sin can consume you. And we already seen what that consequence was if we allow sin to consume us. So what are, what are, what are some examples of standing in that gap? Who stood in the gap before in, our, in biblical times? The biggest example, one of the greatest examples, I'll give you two, but one, one of the greatest ones is Moses. And in Psalms 106 and 23, it states, so God said he would destroy them had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. That means that Moses stood in between the Lord and interceded on behalf of the people. That means that without him, without him closing up and putting in that work, to rebuild that wall and repair that gap, sin could have continued to perpetuate and God would have came in and, and destroyed the whole land and destroyed the whole people. What is another example of that? The ultimate example that we have, uh, that, that we speak about, that we constantly advocate, that we share the good news about is Jesus on the cross. And if, even with him being on the cross, he still continued to stand in that gap and intercede for us on our behalf. Uh, Luke 23 and 34 states, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. It shows that Jesus continues to stand in that gap, to continue, continues to advocate, continues to intercede on our behalf so that God does not come in and destroy the people. Looking out into this world and especially our city, we have a need to fill that gap. We have a need to repair that wall. We have a need to intercede, not only for ourselves, but for the, for the generation that came before us, but most importantly for the generation that's coming up behind us. We need to be those new leaders. We need to be those, we need to be, be those new repairers. We need to be those new builders that are gonna build up the wall and stand in that gap for, um, and stand in that gap for the people. My millennials, I have a challenge for you. 26 to 41, it's time for us to stand in that gap. It's time for us to step up. 
It's time for us to be those leaders that God called for. Because guess what? Without us, without those, cho without his chosen people, you know what the consequences are. We've seen that in Ezekiel 31. All right. And so I take on that challenge. If you, if you are not a part of a small group, and I'll be transparent and let you know that this week, I'll, it will be my first week joining a small group. I'm super excited for it. But if you're not a part of, that small, a, part of a small group in our community, reach out, get connected. Um, Sunday is not the only time where you can come and get filled. We have so many more opportunities for you. And for my millennials, I'm challenging you to stand in that gap. Be, a, be the repair that God has called you to be. Let's do it. Thank you for joining us for this week's small group. If you're not a member of a Victory and Praise small group, now is the time to join. Victory and Praise Stockton is a place of praise, purpose, and progress. And we invite you to join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. in person at 2029 East Harding Way or online via our Facebook or YouTube channels. God bless.